For the first time ever tomorrow, Americans nationwide will receive an alert on their cell phones from President Trump. But it won't be a personal message. It's the first test of a national presidential alert system that will let any president issue a warning about a crisis. That could include a missile launched by another country at the U.S. or a tsunami. First on CBS This Morning, Anna Werner got an inside look at the new system with FEMA officials ahead of the test. Anna, good morning. Good morning. You're probably familiar with the wireless emergency alert system that generates amber alerts and severe weather warnings to your phone. FEMA says it knows that some people don't like those alerts, but they say you shouldn't ignore them, especially these new alerts, which should signal very serious situations. It's the alert that, if it's real, you won't want to get again. When those messages appear on mobile devices, people should take those extremely seriously. It has some direct impact on either life or safety. So says FEMA's Antoine Johnson, who directs the agency's public alert warning system, the system that will send out the nationwide test of the presidential alert on Wednesday. If we have something that's of national significance, we could rapidly notify the American public of that event. Government agencies nationwide have issued more than 40,000 emergency alerts to cell phones since 2012. But those amber and weather alerts target specific regions. This new presidential alert will be nationwide and only used for advance warning of national crises. From coast to coast, the alert came at exactly the same moment. 2.18 p.m. in the east, 1.18 in the midwest, 11.18 Pacific time. While FCC rules prohibit us from airing the alert tones, 225 million devices were supposed to have received the first test of the presidential alert system. From New York... I hope it's not a sign of things to come. <laughs> ...to Chicago... The president can text us. I thought, like, what now? To L.A. I panicked. Um, I wasn't sure what to think of it. Then, just after 2.20, the alert hit every radio and TV nationwide. The ultimate goal, to reach every American simultaneously in the event of a national emergency. From natural disasters to a terror attack. President Trump tonight, who today went on live TV from the Rose Garden and declared a national emergency, citing an invasion on the border. He is trying to go around Congress now to get billions more in taxpayer money for his wall that he campaigned on, saying Mexico would pay for it. In the Rose Garden, the president did what he had long threatened to do, declaring a national emergency to get billions of dollars Congress wouldn't give him to build his border wall. We're going to begin tonight with the deepening toll of a historic cold snap. By early this morning, more than three quarters of the U.S. mainland was at or below freezing. It appears the coldest spot today is Cotton, Minnesota, where the actual temperature that's without wind chill was 56 degrees below zero. Even Hell, Michigan, has frozen over. It was 14 below zero in Hell today. Across the Midwest, the cold shattering records. The Chicago River completely frozen over. On Interstate 81 north of Syracuse, vehicle after vehicle stranded after sliding off the road. Whiteout conditions from lake effect snow making travel impossible. Chicago with wind chills hitting 41 below zero today. Lake Michigan there is a frozen mass of ice. Drivers facing whiteout conditions in Mansville, New York. And look at this, firefighters battling freezing temperatures and exploding cars on the top deck of a parking garage. That's at Newark Liberty Airport. Wind chills below zero stretching into the northeast through tomorrow. And a dangerous winter storm pounding the northwest this morning, causing whiteout conditions. That's right. It was in the northeast last week. Now the northwest. Rob Marciano here with the very latest. Rob, good morning. Good morning. Wait, really, the entire west coast ran across San Francisco, Los Angeles, and snow down to the lower elevations of some of the mountains outside of L.A. But yes, it's the northwest that's really bearing the brunt of this. Portland seeing rain turn to snow. It's been all snow in Seattle overnight, calling all, all sorts of problems. This is a rare second punch of snow this week for Seattle, and they call it the Emerald City, but this morning it is covered in white. Overnight, the Northwest slammed again by another winter storm, bringing near whiteout conditions in Seattle. The wintry mass of heavy snow and ice blanketing parts of Washington, backing up rush hour traffic for miles. Two hours on five to get home. It's bad. Cars like this one left abandoned as slippery roads and visibility become a huge issue for drivers. Wind gusts reaching up to 45 miles per hour in some areas, bringing down trees and blocking roads. Storm hitting the Seattle metro area the hardest, with more than six inches of snow dumping on the city. Planes grounded at the Seattle Tacoma airport with hundreds of flights delayed or canceled.
Now to this big story. A deadly plane crash created a frightening scene in a Southern California neighborhood. Flames and thick smoke poured out of a home in Yorba Linda yesterday after part of the plane slammed into the building. Four people inside were killed along with the pilot. Two people escaped from the home but were injured. Carter Evans is in Yorba Linda, southeast of Los Angeles, near the crash scene. Carter, good morning. Good morning. This is all blocked off here, preserved for NTSB investigators. Now, the plane crashed into a home down the block, but it apparently started breaking up while it was in the air. Debris is everywhere. You can see it did some damage to this home. Witnesses say it felt like an earthquake when the plane hit the ground. Flames erupted from this two-story family home in Yorba Linda Sunday afternoon after part of the plane and one of its engines slammed into it. I heard a huge explosion. The plane's body was found in a backyard of another nearby home. Plane parts rained down across the neighborhood. This video shows a man using a garden hose to put out a fire on a wing. Friend's house, like down the street, um, had, like the parts of the engine flew into their house into a room that he was just in. According to the NTSB, the twin engine Cessna 414 took off from Fullerton Municipal Airport around 1.35 p.m. It made a left turn and climbed to about 7,800 feet. About 10 miles into the flight, the plane began a rapid descent into the neighborhood. Home surveillance video appears to show part of the plane falling from the sky. I look up, I see this huge piece. I don't know what it was. You can just watch it in slow motion. And then I see a big cloud of smoke go up. Oh my God, it was just awful. Police say two men and two women inside the home were killed, along with the male pilot. Loud explosions as army choppers land into this Port of Long Beach building. Two smaller ones and a Blackhawk. All three in and out in a matter of moments. While details of the military drills are kept secret, we know the soldiers will enter the building where they will work out different scenarios. LAPD also out here providing security, but we wanted to know why. Why is the Army doing these trainings in the LA area? The Army really appreciates being able to come into this urban environment and put some of their practices to test in environments that they've never run through before. It's the third day of military drills. This video shows low-flying choppers and loud explosions in downtown LA. Stopping moment for people in Los Angeles when loud explosions rocked the night air and military helicopters descended to land on one of the city's busiest streets. Jim Murray explains what was going on. Oh my God. Los Angeles under attack? It sure looked that way as Black Hawk helicopters flew in formation right over downtown buildings in the pitch dark. What the you can even hear an explosion. Choppers landed smack in the middle of Wilshire Boulevard. Soldiers could be seen running to climb on board in this video shot by a guy out his apartment window. This is Wilshire Boulevard, one of LA's busiest and most famous streets where people were left in a panic wondering what the heck was going on around 9 o'clock Monday night. Overseas now to that devastating fire ripping through an apartment building in Paris, killing at least 10 people and injuring dozens more. Residents running up to the roof are climbing out windows to escape. James Longman has the latest. Good morning, James. Good morning, Robin. This was a catastrophic fire in an upmarket neighborhood of Paris. The true scale of the devastation is only really becoming clear this morning. Apocalyptic. That's what firefighters called this huge fire in Paris overnight, which has killed 10 people and injured more than 30. Look at the strength of the blaze. Orange and purple flames shooting out of windows, roaring for six hours as emergency services battled to get to those traps. Access nearly impossible. Residents winched to safety, some rescued from the roof. 250 firefighters on the scene, eight of them among the injured, pushing through the smoke, balanced precariously on balcony edges. This woman says an alarm went off a little after midnight and smoke was already everywhere. Living on the eighth floor, she had to go from balcony to balcony to get away. She says others joined her, huddled up in a corner, waiting to be rescued. A huge fireball and non-stop smoke billowing for hours in San Francisco after a gas line exploded yesterday afternoon. People were seen running for their lives as the flames spread to nearby buildings. It took PG&E more than two hours to turn off that gas and with the block it cure that area. CBS 13's Adrian Moore brings us the latest.
All of a sudden it ignited and the flame just shot like straight up in the air, probably 20, 30 feet up in the air. Flames and smoke lit up the February sky over San Francisco as a third party contractor hit a PG&E gas line that blew. And I actually thought it was a bomb for a second, so I just thought it was it taking off down the street. The two-story building on the corner is the Hong Kong Lounge 2 restaurant with apartments on the second floor. People within a one-mile radius of the fire were evacuated as crews tried to get the upper hand. Hundreds of residents throughout Ogden and the surrounding city started reporting what they described as intense shaking and a loud boom. It was a boom heard and felt across Ogden and the surrounding cities. One Facebook user said, it shook my house, was like something huge slammed into the earth. The latest complaints concern loud explosion type noises. Gloria Douglas lives directly adjacent to the well site. Yeah, very distinct. You know, it's something that you've not heard here before. And it's loud? Very loud. It's like an explosion. A spokesman for ODNR says that local authorities also did an on-site inspection and found nothing at the site that would indicate a possible explosion. They did look at the uh, monitoring devices and there, were, there was no seismic activity that occurred. They shake their head and say it was much louder. It shook their house, in fact, the, the boom noise. There's one noise he's heard in that time he's not so keen on. That's when our neighborhood got shaken up where it just exploded out of nowhere, causing us to kind of go into frenzy. He said he and his neighbors have been living through these random loud bangs and flashes of lights for years. I'm not the only veteran who lives in our community, so it can kind of shake you up when you hear it. He's reached out to the industrial businesses nearby, but no one seems to know the cause. It's extremely frustrating. Leaving him with more questions than answers. Why is this happening? Conversation of the county. It was so loud and so unexpected that I just kind of like jumped. Last night, Jackson County 911 received several reports of an earth shaking sound. A couple people called in and saying they'd heard this loud, loud boom in the county. And uh, of course, we uh, immediately went to checking on that. We checked all over the area and we never found anything. Devana Heisel lives in the northern part of the county. She says the mysterious boom shook the foundation of her house and scared a few of her neighbors. We've had it to shake the house before, but not so much. That we even have a little dog that jumped. That never happened before. So this isn't the only time folks have heard a loud boom in this area. We went to the Jackson County 911 Facebook page. Look at some of these comments. Riri, this is the second time. The first boom was last Friday, I think. Look just below her comment. Carla, it felt like the ground shook along with the boom. Check this one out. Manuela, it could be transformers blowing up. And then Clyde, he said, I heard it too. I live in eastern Jackson County. I thought the neighbor's house might have blown up. What it was or is. <laughs> if we knew, or, we'd or, tell you. <laughs> or if it's coming back. Right? I, I, did you hear it? I didn't hear it, but I, I, I keep hearing people talking about I it. I heard it. I was like, you heard it? Yeah, I had no idea what it was. Well, obviously, I'm not alone. No one else Go, does I'm not either. going crazy. That's good. Right. Many people are still asking. After a loud sound vibrated throughout Little Rock late last night and again early this morning, social media was buzzing earlier today as several people shared what they thought was the answer to the unexplained boom that was heard. What I would like to know is what it was and is it going to happen again so that I won't be so in suspense and afraid. And wake people up at night. Neighbors along the Wake County, Franklin County line contacted CBS 17 saying they've been hearing loud booms are rolling through neighborhoods that straddle the county line. It almost felt like a earthquake. Elizabeth Elliott says it's been going on for at least two weeks, happening late at night or early in the morning. We actually felt it slash heard it this morning. Um, it's pretty big. It's pretty big. Some of her Barham Crossing neighbors are reporting windows shaking. Booms seem to come early in the day or late in the evening. Some neighbors say the boom is so loud it wakes their dogs. Very interesting. Well, a spokesperson for the Wake County Sheriff's Department said they had a deputy sit out there a while recently, but he heard nothing. But just after he left, there was another report of the loud boom. Well, did you hear it? A mysterious boom rocked South Philadelphia. This mysterious boom, though, 
anything but normal. I was asleep, a pretty deep sleep. It was just this loud noise that woke me up out of nowhere. It felt as if my house was kind of shaking. My dog's ears had kind of perked up. Different South Philly neighbors, same time. 152 Tuesday morning, a loud boom rocking South Philadelphia. I didn't have a good idea of what it was. What else could produce that loud noise? Many living south of Washington wondering the same thing. Earthquakes, military drills, or blown transformers, whatever it is, the mystery booms we first reported last week on the Wake Franklin County line are still happening. CBS 17's Amy Cutler digging deeper into these concerns live in Northern Wake County tonight. And Amy, a lot of people are concerned about this. Yeah, they certainly are, Angela. A homeowner I'd spoken with last week reached out saying she heard a blast just last night. That's why we came out here today, hoping to finally get to the bottom of this. It sounds like a firebomb. Neighbors say the loud booms happen late at night or early in the morning. They're powerful enough to shake homes and wake people up. Pretty loud sound. Um, more than you might get with, say, thunderstorm. It's not a gunshot because we hear gunshots here all the time. We hear rifles. People in and around the Barham Place subdivision along the Wake County, Franklin County line say it's been going on for about a month. A story that began in Mid City has taken us to Harahan River Ridge and Wagaman. Now we go to Lakeview, where late Monday night the mysterious booms were heard again, this being one of them. Loud boom, woke up, startled. First thing I thought was a train car exploded. The surveillance video shows a flash of light followed by the loud bang. If it was a transformer, I, you know, I imagine Entergy would have been out here fixing something. So. And it's not like you lost power or anything. No. A noise loud enough to awaken cars and people in the area. You get to the point where this is continuing to happen. Catherine Norton just can't figure it out, but knows this one hit close to home. Thought that, okay, maybe there's a derailment or maybe a car ran into another one or you know, something of that nature, but it's not because I'm used to these tracks. So when you've been here since 1984, you're used to all the sounds. Norfolk Southern had nothing unusual to report. Also, the video shows no train in the area at the time of the incident. It's some kind of explosion that generates light, some kind of energy. We also confirm there's no filming in the neighborhood, a theory that's been floating around. Whatever it was, it was out of scope of the camera. Even with video showing these bomb-like sounds, its source remains a mystery, leaving many with more questions than answers as to what it could be. During the debate to name the security threats that worry him, Newt Gingrich lays out three scenarios. A weapon of mass destruction in an American city, a cyber attack, and something many have never heard of. An electromagnetic pulse attack, which would literally destroy the country's capacity to function. An electromagnetic pulse attack, or EMP. It's been the stuff of fiction on the Fox show 24. It's an EMP! But it's also a real threat, experts say, and it likely wouldn't look like that. An EMP attack, they say, is an intense burst of electromagnetic radiation. It can be triggered by detonating a nuclear weapon at high altitude, a weapon that could be launched by a rogue nation or a terrorist group with access to it. Detonated low to the ground, atomic weapons have a devastating physical shock. But detonated miles up in the atmosphere, experts say, the main impact is electrical, energy that doesn't kill people but spreads like lightning, striking any electrical grid or circuitry, feeding into them burning them out. Whole cities could go dark. Security analyst James Carafano has written about EMP attacks. In one single event, what could be disabled? If you had a large-scale EMP event in the United States, you would everything would be disabled. Because even things that, that, that weren't knocked out, let's say your car, which might be OK, but the electrical grid's going to be gone. There's going to be no way to do traffic lights. There's going to be no way to land ships. There's no way to get fuel to the gas stations to refuel your car. And if you got them there, the gas pumps wouldn't work. Think of this fictional attack in the movie Ocean's Eleven. Turn off the lights! Turn off the lights! Turn off the lights! Turn them off! Alexa, reheat pasta. Reheating pasta. It's cool, right? Yeah, I didn't know you guys put Alexa in a microwave. 
Yeah, we're putting her in a lot of stuff now. But trust me, there are a lot of fails. Like, like what? The incident. Wait, that, that was you guys? I don't know, was it? <laughs> She Power says down. she's doing it, but I don't down. see anything to you. She's dead. There's a lot of barrels in here, wires all together, detonators on them. Do you see the trigger? She's got something in her hand. Conspiracy bigger and more secret than the Manhattan Project. Why do such a thing and lie about it? Our own government. Your own government lies as a matter of course, as a matter of policy. The Tuskegee experiments on black men in the 30s, Henrietta Lacks. Driven not only by corporate greed, but a darker objective. The takeover of America. And then the world itself, by any means necessary, however violent or cruel or efficient, by severe drought, brought on by weather wars, conducted secretly using aerial contaminants and high-altitude electromagnetic waves in a state of perpetual war to create problem, reaction, solution scenarios to distract, enrage, and enslave American citizens at home with tools like the Patriot Act and the National Defense Authorization Act, which abridge the Constitution in the name of national security. The militarization of police forces in cities across the U.S., the building of prison camps by the Federal Emergency Management Agency with no stated purpose, the corporate takeover of food and agriculture, pharmaceuticals and healthcare, even the military in clandestine agendas to fatten, dull, sicken, and control a populace already consumed by consumerism. And I encourage you all to go shopping more. A government that taps your phone, collects your data, and monitors your whereabouts with impunity a government preparing to use that data against you when it strikes and the final takeover begins. The takeover of America. By a well-oiled and well-armed multinational group of elites that will cull, kill, and subjugate. 
happening as we sit here. It's happening all around us. The other shoe waiting to drop. It'll probably start on a Friday. The banks will announce a security action necessitating their computers to go offline all weekend. Digital money will disappear. They can just steal your money? Followed by the detonation of strategic electromagnetic pulse bombs to knock out major grids. Well, it will seem like an attack on America by terrorists or Russia.